Hey everyone, it's Rhino. I just saw Zootopia this last weekend and I loved it. In fact, I loved it so much I saw it twice and I want to talk to you guys about it. So I want to try something a little bit different today though. Um, while we talk about it, I figured we could do an arts and crafts project where you guys could follow along. But in order to do that, I'm going to require the help of a very special uh, guest here today and that is my friend Amber. Hello. Before we get started doing that though, we need to make a drink. So we need some ice. You're gonna need some blueberry lemonade, blueberry vodka, and blue curacao. And some fun glasses to drink out of. What you're gonna wanna do is blueberry vodka. It's one shot on this side, the bigger side. And then we're gonna do one blue curacao shot of a smaller one. Hopefully I don't spill this one on my glass table. Oh, that thing's moving. This is a challenge. So then we've got our blueberry lemonade. I'm gonna pour that in on the top. Give it a little shake. A little sip for taste, whether you need to add more vodka, less vodka. I don't, I don't know who you are for doing that, but this is delicious. If you want to make a less mommy daddy version of this drink, you can just get regular lemonade and some blueberry snow cone syrup. Add to it, it'll give it the blue, the blue color. Um, you can find that at like a party store. Um, and of course, this drink is called. The Night Howler. The Night Howler. So if you've seen the movie, you'll understand. That's one box of a drink. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> so I've got us a, a little fun project over here. So we're gonna do um, some splatter paints today. They're super easy, super simple, but I feel like I really like them if you do just the right color. So, um, and there's something that I think anybody can kind of do. They're a fun little like cheat around art project, I, I call them because I feel like I have no actual talent, so I just figure out how to cheat at everything. I went online and I found a photo of Judy and Nick. We are gonna each cut out around them to make a little figure here. And then uh, we're gonna tape that figure down onto the canvas. So step one, you're gonna cut out Judy, I'm gonna cut out Nick. Amber, why don't you fill us in? What's the plot of Zootopia? I know it starts with your favorite here, your favorite. With my favesies, my faves is uh, Judy Fox and she dreams of being a cop in the city of Zootopia, but she is just a bunny, and nobody takes bunnies seriously because they're just cute and fluffy. Obviously. Uh-huh. So she uh, goes to Zootopia and wants to prove herself as a real cop, and she meets Nick, who is actually um, a fox, but he's kind of a scam artist. So they don't really get along very well at first, but then Judy gets a case when she needs Nick's help. On, on the shallow part of it all, it's about, you know, the bunny that has to overcome adversity adversity to to prove, like, she can do it. She can be she can be anything she wants to be, anything she sets her mind to. I thought it was a great whodunit movie. You get to this moment later on in the movie where you realize there's, like, a really heavy yeah. message here that I, I, I think is pretty great, especially since this is a kids movie. It's very relevant to what's going on right now yeah. in our world. So in the opening scene, like it's Judy when she's younger and she's getting harassed by a fox. So immediately you're like, all right, well, here's the set of the, the fox association. You know? So it's got her wanting to pursue her dreams, her wanting to stand up, and then it's got the bullying thing. And I was like, that's what this movie's gonna be about. Don't be a bully. Mm -hmm. No. I like that it took you down different ways. Like right. you're like, oh, okay, so this is what it's about. Oh, yeah. no, it's actually this. Oh, it's a buddy cop film. No, it's a mystery. Wait a second. What is it? Like, it's kind of all over yeah. the place. I like there's, that. There's definitely a third act in this movie where you really realize, like, this movie is actually about ignorance. There was a lot of, like, very subtle jokes that you're like, oh, that's actually... Ah. There were moments where I was uncomfortable. Like, I've never I've never watched a Disney movie and felt like, oh, wow, like, as I just, I recognize that in reality. Because yeah. it's a very realistic situation that happens every day in awkward, life. Awkward, uncomfortable? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, like, ooh, that is, yeah. that's an awkward situation to be in. And so it I was gotta, weird to see it reflected in a Disney movie. It's, I, it's a fun movie. It's a light movie that you can just sit back and enjoy. So, so don't, I don't want this conversation for people to be turned off being like, oh, it's too much. There's too much to it. Like, at, at its heart, it's still... It's still very it's good. It's still a Disney movie, a Disney kids movie, but it is definitely like a message that if you're having your like six year old watch this, like hopefully this makes them a better person in the long run. And I, I really respect that. Um, I think it, the storytelling was done in just the right type of way because to your point, I think that kids will get the message, but because it's told through animals and, and really beautiful animation, I think that, that you know, it's still appropriate for a child to see. But if you look at it from an adult's perspective, you catch a lot more of the storyline. I think you're saying the thing about animals too also kind of, 
I like that it wasn't people for that reason because it's not it's not just a specific type of a person. It's just kind of a blatant like everybody. You know, like let's be good to, to everybody. Everybody, right. you know. And let's not, you know, let's not judge a fox by his nose. Is that is that that's not a saying, is it? No, it's definitely not. Judge a uh, elephant by his colors? No, no. That's a horse of a different color? Oh my god. Tiger can't judge a judge a zebra by his stripes? No oh my god. You're just making things up again. <laughs> Regardless, great thing. So we've both finished cutting out our animals here. As you can see, so the silhouette looks pretty good. I look at the back and I try to think, could I tell who that was on the back here? I like to put them in the middle of the canvas right here. Um, you can do them at the bottom right there if you want to line up the feet, but generally when I do these ones, for artistic reasons, I'm going to do them here. We're just going to hold them down with our hands. We're going to take a pencil and we're going to outline the character onto the canvas. You, remember to use light pencil because even though pencil you can erase really easily, I find that when I'm like painting over it, good God, it never disappears. So keep a pencil sharpener handy. And now you're gonna see all the imperfections you had. That's your amber. It's perfect, obviously. Practically perfect in every way. I don't know why I said that like Dobby from Harry Potter, but <laughs> I very clearly remember him and Mary Poppins. Don't get rid of these guys, though. You're gonna need this later on, so this is important. Look, your bunny came out good. Judy came Her out good. Her name is Judy. Judy Hot. Maybe she'll go on through the police system and become a judge someday. I hate my sound just saying. Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, you need to stay up. Alright. What we're gonna do, the idea here is that we're gonna paint the entire canvas one color. The silhouette is gonna be a different color, and then afterwards we're gonna splatter a third color third or fourth, we'll see, over it. But not over the silhouette. You want to keep the silhouette clean. So that's why you're going to keep that guy for later. So since my character is Nick, I think I'm going to do a green background. Since he's in this like orange colored fox, I'm going to do the silhouette orange. And then, um, I don't know. We'll see, what, we'll see what we do for a splatter. But for Judy, what are you thinking? I think I'm going to do, what are we talking about? Dark blue? Yeah, well. I, th I was thinking you could do the light blue the like light her shirt, blue here, and then the gray because she's the bunny. Yeah, the light blue. Yeah. She has like a. She's got the blue like and then blue the fast thing thingy. Over it. Um, she's over there somewhere. I am so. Judy. You're under arrest. I mean, we shouldn't use that voice. <laughs> <laughs> These are super cheap. They're like seventy-nine cents each. Um, my recommendation is wherever you're getting them, check and see if there's an app. Download the app. There's usually coupons in there. But let's. Yeah, to paint. Yeah, like a paintbrush. Oh, okay. If you get a lot of these, my little tip here is like put your little pinky on, dab the top, and then when you store them and you're looking down at the cap, now you know what color it is. Also, when it dries, you'll actually know what color this will actually be when it dries because it's not always that green on the inside there. Sometimes because they're cheap too, they they don't do a very thick, thick paint, so you might have to do more than one. Oh, I just try to get as close as I can. It's okay if you go over a little bit. Because remember, you are painting the silhouette a different color. And on top of that, at the end, I like to outline it too, so you'll see when we get there. You know, if you're doing this with your kids, dog, neighborhood friend, I don't know. Just make your life easier. Maybe get like a cheap tablecloth, or you can get a, uh, what are they called? Drop cloth for super cheap, for like $2. You can get like a, one of those plastic vinyl cloths at like a Dollar Tree. Some of the things I liked about Zootopia are the fun little Easter eggs. If there is one visual frozen Easter egg specifically, it's toward the beginning. If you're going to see the movie, Judy is on the monorail or uh, train. Or train. Mm -hmm. I don't know what if they have a special word for it, but. Um, train. And as soon as she gets into the tundra city part of the city. Tundra town. Tundra town. There, if you look in the bottom left of the screen, there is an elephant with um, two children and the children are dressed as Anna and Elsa. Apparently, there was someone at the studio who was specifically in charge with making the signs for all of the different businesses throughout Zootopia. And every single last one of them is a pun of some sort off of uh, animals. So, uh, Macy's in Zootopia is Mousies, and uh, Target is Targoat. Um, I, the second time I saw it, I saw Trader Doe's, which I thought was really funny. There's a lot in the background. Like this animation for this film is some of the it's best animation beautiful. I've seen. And you honestly, like you just said, even with these tricks like that, you can get lost in the background of any of these scenes. Mm -hmm. I liked the one, so um, oh yeah, the, the, the police chief is um, berating um, Judy and 
he's saying like life is not an animated film where you can sing and dance your cares away so let it go and i was like oh that's really funny yeah it was very deliberate there's a character called duke weaselton in this and he's confronted at one point and judy calls him duke weselton and he says it's pronounced weaselton and in frozen it's the inverse of that joke it's, duke of you know, weselton yeah so she goes duke you know, Weaselton, and he's like, it's pronounced Weselton. So it's funny, and the best part is the voice. Oh, um, is it Michael? No, I Al know. Alan Tudyk, I believe is how you pronounce it. It could be Firefly. He, he was in Wreck It Ralph, he was in um, Frozen, he was in Big Hero 6, and now he does a voice for um, Zootopia. And a lot of people are saying this is just another hit, and like, we're in another renaissance, you know, it's mm -hmm. another, another error of. Which is great. Yeah, so, I mean, that's great. I mean, if, if more are popping out like Zootopia, I'm happy. What's great is there are like future Easter eggs in here. So there's, there's a, you know, Weselton is, oh, excuse me, it's pronounced Weselton. Weselton is selling some bootleg DVDs and they're like studio ripoffs. And, oh, and he even makes a joke where he's like, and some that haven't even come out yet. And there's like a Frozen 2. There's Frozen 2, but there's also- The giant one. Me Meowna is the cat. Of Meow Moana. For, so for uh, Moana that's coming out. Yeah. And then the other one- It was the giant it's, one. It's, it is- um, The Jack and the Beanstalk animated. It's, it's the Jack and the Beanstalk. Out, but I, I think can't it's remember called, the name like, I think it's called Gigantic. My favorite um, Easter egg that I found afterward, I found out afterward, which I thought was really clever. If you've ever seen the Kristen Bell video of her husband, Dax Shepard, uh, giving her a slot on Ellen. on Ellen, it is hilarious. And Kristen Bell loves slots. She like cries it's, in the video. Yeah, she's very so emotional. Funny. She's so excited. Um, Kristen Bell does lend her voice for uh, for a very small the role, a uh, very small little cameo in Zootopia, and she is the voice of Priscilla the Sloth. All right, so if you have any slip ups, like somebody drops their paintbrush on the ground, where's you can't the spot? Even tell, it's right there. Just a little bit of alcohol. Dab it up there. Dab it up. Takes it out. Goes for this if it's on your clothes, but I would still throw it in the wash right away when you're done. Moving on to the silhouette now. So, fun fact about Shakira being on the Zootopia soundtrack. She asked if they would make the hips for her character wider. <laughs> she was saying that they were just too, they were too dainty and thin. Which is funny, because I feel like Shakira is such a small girl. I know her hips don't lie, but... She's got curves, though. Amber's got her Judy and the canvas down. I've got Nick going. Come back to your silhouettes that we cut out earlier. You're gonna want to take some, uh, like, just you know, scotch tape, whatever, roll it up into the little balls and tape like the, the corners, the ears, the tail, the feet. See, for her on Judy, she has a lot of thinner parts, so we had to get the foot, because we're gonna need to apply them over where we painted. So this is gonna go over this, let's do that. Just, just like, <laughs> kind of uh, generally there. It's gonna be a little wider. What if you like, you know, made the foot a little bit bigger then? <laughs> That's <laughs> okay. Because I did a lot. We're gonna outline it later, so it's it's not that big a deal. As long as they're like pretty much over the top, the general center, like see, Nick's got, like his head's too big, but we're gonna come back to that later. The next step, you're not gonna wanna do this in the house, I don't think, or you could, I mean, if you're a pig, whatever. I'm just kidding, you don't have to be a pig. You can have a craft room, whatever. But again, you're gonna want, I, like I said, there's tarps you can get, they're like two bucks, a dollar, whatever. You're gonna want a plastic tarp. I do this part on my patio outside, which you'll see in a second. But you're gonna wanna lay your tarp down, because the next part, we're gonna be splattering. So I changed, I got um, some paints here. So for Nick, I think I'm gonna do two color spiders. I'm gonna do red and blue, because those are the colors of his tie. And then for Judy, Amber, I think you decided dark blue and pink. Mm -hmm. This is, her vest is dark blue and uh, kind of pink. Okay, there's a couple of different ways to spider. Um, one of the recommended ways is like if you get a brush that's got a little bit of a give. Ow! <laughs> if you get a brush that has With razor sharp needles. <laughs> a bee. <laughs> needles and slippers. Ow! Yeah, the hypodermic um, <laughs> brand. Uh, so I'm not gonna touch this again, but you can dip the tip in the paint and then. Do that thumb motion that I did before. <laughs> I don't usually do that because it takes forever and it's really small. So I literally just <laughs> open the paint and I put it on my fingertips. 
one of the things you want to make sure to do is splatter from above. You don't want to splatter sideways because even though he is taped down, he is, you know, is still off the canvas a little bit. So it, you don't want it to go like underneath and then you have to fix it. It's very hard to cover up a splatter mistake. So I'm going to do a little bit on my index finger here, just a little bit and just you give it a little, click away those boogers. I know that's a terrible way to describe it. So I like to make sure that you at least flick a little bit too um, around the edge. So don't be afraid to get, because you kind of want to make sure you have enough splatter so it really kind of defines the edge of the silhouette. So the closer you are to the canvas, the more the thick spot like that you're going to get. The farther away, once it's once you flick a couple times, if you go really close, just keep flicking. You'll get little the little specks here. There is another method that is a little trickier that involves a straw, and you have to be really careful not to ingest the paint. Try to pour out a little bit into the cap, just a little bit. Take the straw. Okay. Now you're not going all the way up, you're just going a little bit. That's not terrible. So there's you know a little bit in the straw here. There you go. And you'll get like a blast of the straw. Yeah, do that. This one makes me dizzy a little bit sometimes. <laughs> Okay, so that dot got like a little under his leg, so I just take the corner of the paper towel, just kind of dab it a little bit. But don't worry, we're going to do something after this too that's going to help fix that up a little bit. I'm going to let that settle and dry here for a second, and we're going to do Judy. Amber doesn't want to do Judy, she don't want to get her hands dirty. Well, you, a great idea, rubber gloves. Like that's true. So I do actually have some latex gloves. I am regretting not getting out right now because those probably would have been great because then you can just peel them off, throw them away, clean hands. Baby powder soft. You say baby powder soft. Baby power soft. Yeah, you are saying power. Power. Powder. We're all saying the same thing. Nope. <laughs> all right. So we're going to do pink next. Now I'm going to make sure I get as much of this blue off. Like I don't want to be flicking wet blue and pink paint because that's going to make a different color. So this will be a nice contrast. I always like to do a nice bright color and a, like dark color and then like the canvas somewhere in the middle. What also looks really good is if you paint the canvas solid black and then do it neon colors like that. I've done that before for like a rainbow bright, or not rainbow bright, excuse me, a rainbow dash pony painting. What do you think? I know it's good. That look pretty good. So now what you're gonna wanna do is carefully, you, and you wanna like kinda let this dry pretty well. Sometimes I, I, but I mean if you're really careful, you don't have to let it dry. You just you can't touch any of the, you know, the splatter area. So you're gonna peel your guy off here. And see it kept the splatter away for the most part. Like I have that little accident where I dabbed up right there. That's okay, that's nothing that, See, because it's a flat area and not upraised, we can just do a little paint, but we're also gonna outline here. Sharpie makes these great like paint markers. Um, I use these, you can use paint if you want, regular paint, but um, I like to use these just because they're steadier in my handshake a little bit. Ooh, I got a little bit, you gotta be careful, you gotta, because I got a little paint there. So be careful when you do this part. You should be waiting till it dries completely, but I didn't think to do multiple canvases also they are excited, they want to get it done, but that's, this is kind of where the make or break section of it all. I'm just going to go back to being on here really quick, because I want to outline him put the thing on. <clears throat> I think these actually don't need too much of a touch up. So I just went through and kind of added a little bit like, for my shadow I added a little bit, like the leg went up a little bit, the tail here at the end. And you know the arm thing, just give it a little bit extra. And Amber, you had a quite the outline there. Thank you. Yeah, how'd you get that outline like that? Um, well, I started with the purple sharpie, and when I got about here, I think I got into some pink paint, and then it started to uh, make it more like a fuchsia color. So you can like. And I kind of liked it, so I kept it. It's a happy accident. Mm -hmm. And. Um, like, 
Amber's is solid enough, like you could just leave it like this, I think. You didn't have to outline it either. I just like to outline it. I think it makes it pop. Yeah. You know, Judy's eyes are purple, it's a great choice, but and see she's got a little bit that came in the line. It's your choice, you know, leave it because you like it, it adds a little bit extra to it, or you know, or you can fix it up. Like I have a little bit on this feet, but what I'll do is I'll just kinda like make the line a little bit thicker and then kind of get rid of it that way. Pretty good. I really like how these turned out. I think my next goal in the slathered painting, canvas number three, gazelle. Canvas number four, glitter, dancing, go-go, tigers. Hope you enjoyed your drink, hope you enjoyed the painting, and hope you enjoyed listening to us talk about the movie. So until next time. Bye.